You ever think that maybe things have gone a little too far? At one point in my life, I just downloaded Rocket League and I decided that I wanted to play it for fun. Maybe the Helen Keller memes, maybe the lag memes. Maybe we've taken this like, I don't know, like just a little bit too far. I don't know, man. I'm not just saying this because John is captain of F2 now. I'm not just saying it. At one point, maybe for five seconds, I was salty about that. Maybe 10. I don't even think about it anymore, I promise. Just somebody please fucking buy the team, please. <clears throat> I was browsing my Twitter the other day, and I read everything. If anybody has ever sent me anything on Twitter, I've read it. Go ahead and try it right now. You can send me anything you want. So the other day, I just happened to notice that somebody sent me this. Neat Mike's Gay Adventures by Squid's Word. Neat Mike fan fiction. It's a story about me visiting the club to meet my friends John and Rob, and boy, was he up for an adventure. I have been saving this just so I can read it on camera. Let's do this, man. <gasps> The goal! The Japanese announcer yelled in a foreign tone. I don't know why he had to be Japanese. Mike had scored an insane aerial hit with his car and won the game in overtime. Okay, so the guy starts off the erotica like any other day of my life, you know? Nothing new here. It was a long and tiresome match for Mike. Usually Mike partnered with John and Rob on his matches. However, they told Mike that they were busy planning something special for Mike. Oh, what are they planning for me, huh? Mike walked to the club instead of his usual drive since he promised John he would meet Mike with new bicycles that John wanted to try out with Rob. I would never do this. If John called me up, yo, dude, I just got these new sick bicycles, man. You want to check them out? You know what? How about you never call me again, John? I don't need fucking weirdos in my life. Fuck. That was stupid. Mike was rather confused. Yeah, they're like, what's going on? Why, why would John want to show me bikes? There was something suspicious going on. How was a bike special? Mike, thinking it was just his thoughts over complicating things, this happens sometimes, followed John guessing that the special thing that John was referring to was just a bike anyways. Boy, was he wrong. The moment the garage door closed, John started ruthlessly <laughs> kissing Mike. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, John. What are you doing? I'm gay for you, Mike. This is me trying to impersonate John. It's not easy because we both have, like, similar voices. I'm gay for you, Mike. I thought you already knew. Yeah, 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 I know, man. But I didn't expect you to go this far. John, not caring at all for what Mike had to say, pinned Mike to the ground. Okay, A, John's not pinning anybody to the ground, let, let alone me. He pinned me to the ground so I couldn't fight back and continued kissing me some more. He was waiting for this moment his entire life. He couldn't stop now. About 30 seconds later, Rob opened the door to the garage. This is typical Rob fashion. He probably walked in and had to do some sort of like a grand entrance if you've ever watched his intros. Just opens the garage. Oh, what's going on, guys? It's uh, Rob. I'm here finally, 30 seconds later. We do it for the likes. John, Rob said, trembling. What are you doing here? You said we could share him. This is so fucking weird. I said, what are you doing? Rob exclaimed again. John had absolutely no reply. He was in La La Land from kissing Mike. Mike was suffocating on John's lips. Ugh. Rob tackled John with the strength of a bull, and only then did John realize Rob was in the room. Fine, we'll share him. Mike was completely passed out on the floor from John's intense ki- Come on. There are two women in the world that would get me to pass out from passionate kissing. Poppy and Helen Keller. <laughs> Nice meme. Look what you did, John. He's passed out now, Rob replied. Don't worry. This means he won't struggle anymore and we can have some more fun with him, John said. This is this is like rape. John is literally raping me in this story now. Although it's more believable, let's just say that at the beginning of this story, I was roofied. I didn't know what was going on. They took me to the living room. John and Rob realized that their plans worked so well with each other, so they decided to make out as well on the couch before resuming to ruthlessly and mercilessly literally rape me. Mike, regaining consciousness, sees this and immediately grabs the phone. And then I hide in the closet. See, this is what I would do in this situation. I would be looking for an exit. He dials Cronovi. All right, Crow, man. I need some help. Come to my location right now. And I'm also sorry that you had to be dragged into this story. 
Didn't write it. Anything for you, Mike Chan? <laughs> I don't know why he's I don't know why he's Asian, but he is. Crow immediately hangs up and rushes to his location, dressed in a fancy tuxedo and freshly brushed hair. He ran at speeds of nearly 20 miles per hour to get to John's garage. Using a breach charge. <laughs> Fucking Rainbow Six Siege. He blows the wooden material away and accesses the inside. This is legit Rainbow Six Siege. I'm just gonna put some Rainbow Six Siege gameplay on, and you can pretend this is Cronovi coming to save me. John and Rob were still making out with each other, so Cronovi had a chance to find Mike. He picked up Mike's familiar scent from his constant stalking near Mike's house, so finding him was easy. Well, it's not a bad smell. I'm not a bad smelling guy. Mike Chan, I'm here. Are we alone? Yes, we're alone, Crow. Thank God you are here. These guys. Crow immediately starts kissing Mike ruthlessly, and now I'm getting raped by Cronovi. John and Rob finished making out, and they realized that Mike was gone. Luckily, every Saturday, John and Rob stocked Mike with Cronovi too, so they were also familiar with Mike's handsome scent. John and Rob busted the doors to the closet and found Crow kissing Mike unconscious. Hey, Crow, let us join in too, John said. Yeah, there's no reason not to share, Rob said afterwards. Sorry, guys, my boy my friend Lechino broke up with me. Turns out he was straight and only dated me for the fortune I paid him. I needed something to kiss. And I used to always fangirl Mike's sexiness. Lichino, again, I'm sorry that you had to be involved in this. Let me just emphasize, did not write this. I have an idea. Here comes Rob's brilliant idea. I have an idea, guys. I'll kiss his lips, and then you guys can have his cheeks. Uh, sure. But instead, I'll have the lips, Cronovi countered. You guys are pathetic. I organized this, so I should get the lips, John finally said. Mike fainted. It's, this is probably the most realistic thing in this entire story. If this was actually going down in real life, I would either A, faint, or just B, you know, like... Suicide jokes, not funny, kids. Don't follow my lead. Mike fainted, but he was starting to like the gayness anyway. Mike was always extremely gay. <laughs> Fake news. I had no idea what happened that night, but whatever happened ended up with me with a face completely red from hickeys, and an Asian bulldog who looks like it had been through some extreme pain. What? Mike sneaked out of the closet and found the trio in a three-way kissing stance, which seems to defy the laws of physics, but somehow they managed to pull it off. I'm picturing like a, uh, a triangle. And just a triangle of kissing. Mike ran through the doors of the garage as quietly as he can and escaped through what seemed to be a huge explosion that blew half the garage away because apparently the easiest way to get into a garage, Cronovi, is blowing it up with C4. Like, come on, dude. Somebody's gonna have to pay for this garage. Mike finally had freedom. However, I realized something. The time that he had spent with that group of three had touched him. And however, he could not say anything through the constant suffocation. He really liked the romance. Mike ran back through the garage hole and through the door. Hey guys, you have made me realize true gayness. Let's kiss some more. Mike yelled. I Apparently I yelled that. The trio smiling all said, I love you Mikey baby. And I turned back and said, I love you too. With that, they kissed the night away. The next morning, the group of four kidnapped Licinio and spanked him until he confessed to pretending he was straight and he was actually gay all along, even though he is straight. So he confessed that he was gay to get us to stop spanking him. The end. I don't know what depths of hell created this story, but let's just immediately forget that this was ever created, guys. Holy shit, this has five reviews. Damn it, I thought I would be the first to write a Neat Mike fanfic. Oh look, Cronovi reviewed this. Blushes, Mike Chan noticed me. Apparently I reviewed this too. I already know what the comments are gonna say. You guys are gonna pretend that I wrote this. Believe it or not, but I have better things to do in my spare time than write fan fiction. I would never dream of doing this. I should have been the fucking captain. You get me so